In the headlines, an MOU in the pipeline for regional recognition of higher learning institutions, a response and preparedness plan to stave off Zika outbreak, and it's not all doom and gloom, says ECCB governor about election of Donald Trump as U.S. president. I am Kenny Williams with the Channel 5 News, back with the details after this. Thank you for staying with us. First up, the National Accreditation Board is working with CARICOM counterparts to improve region-wide recognition of higher learning institutions. Executive Director of the National Accreditation Board, Rock Bruno, says it is working with the Caribbean Area Network for Quality Assurance in Tertiary Education in developing a related memorandum of understanding. We are currently working on a memorandum of, of understanding whereby we would automatic it would be automatic that any um, institution which is accredited in any one country in the region in CARICOM region we are referring to would be automatically accepted by the other accreditation uh, agencies in the in the region all the members of CARICOM do have have established accreditation boards or agencies and all of them are in agreement to that, with that. But the, the final uh, decision in terms of signing it, you know, we have to discuss that with the, minister, with the Ministry of Education, more specifically with the Minister of Education. He explained that the memorandum is expected to cover a variety of areas linked to the delivery of quality education. Quite a number of areas you would have to look at the the registration of institutions, the accreditation of institutions, the, the manner in which their programs are developed, the uh, personnel involved in training at the tertiary level. So we would be all, as it were, speaking from the same Bible, singing from the same song sheet, so that, you know, they, which would in turn eliminate bureaucracy and uh, provide for a smoother, seamless <coughs> process of integrating the Caribbean, which is what the ultimate objective is. The board was set up through legislation in 2006 and serves as a quality assurance regulator of post-secondary and tertiary level educational institutions. On to health news now, a comprehensive preparedness and response plan is being developed for Dominica as health authorities fight to stave off a Zika outbreak. The Chief Medical Officer, Dr. David Johnson, told a first-ever Zika consultation that the plan, in partnership with PAHO, is at a very advanced stage. Components of the plan includes the surveillance, includes sorry, surveillance and reporting, laboratory testing, risk communication, advice was given with regards to personal protection, environmental management to include source reduction and strategies for response to high, in high risk areas. And part of our plan included cl the clinical management of Zika in pregnancies and clinical management of cases of Guillain-Barre and other neurological complications. Johnson has confirmed there have been no reported Zika cases on island for more than two months. We still cannot drop the ball in terms of our response to Zika. We still need to continue actively monitoring and looking at the management of the few, few pregnant mothers who have been diagnosed of Zika. I am therefore pleased that the Pan American Health Organization is providing technical support and financial support to Dominica in finalizing our Zika response plan. Meantime, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Helen Roye, is hoping that when complete, there will be enforcement of the response plan across the board. It is my hope that the guidelines developed will be a blueprint to guide our policy makers and service providers towards delivery of an articulated vision. I also hope that this plan will be a working document to be supported by operational plans and will be executed by heads of departments 
as the time continues to go by. This required, as you would realize, the stakeholders' input, and this, we expect, will form the basis of a national Zika plan. The first confirmed case of Zika locally was recorded in March 2016 and has been dealing with an increase of cases since then. In the face of a new threat, the Ministry of Health developed a response plan to Zika. We had the opportunity to revise our vector control plans and Cabinet also approved funding for our exorbitant budget submitted by the Ministry of Health. We received commendation on our efforts for an effective response to Zika. This, however, has not made us contented as we know the challenges that we can face from time to time as it relates to even other vectors. The governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank has weighed in on the election of Donald Trump as the U.S. president. The inauguration of Donald Trump as the 45th President of the United States will be held on Friday, January 20 in Washington, D.C. ECB Governor Timothy Antoine says we'll have to wait to see what Trumpism will mean for the Caribbean. We know what he said he wants to do. We now have to see what he actually does. Uh, we are hopeful that uh, some of the measures that he will introduce will have a positive effect on the Caribbean, but we have to wait and see. If he is able to spend money on infrastructure as he plans to do, that will improve growth in the U.S., which could have a positive effect on our economy. If he cuts taxes as he proposes to do, that could have more disposable income, which could be a positive for tourism. But there is also the issue of the budget deficit uh, in the U.S., uh, the fiscal deficit, and how that is going to be funded and the impact on the U.S. dollar. So we have to wait to see what happens with trade, what happens with immigration? What happens with climate change? So at this moment, we are very much in uh, watching closely, analyzing, and looking for opportunities. So we don't think it's all doom and gloom, but I think we have to be nimble and be prepared to see the opportunities quickly and then seize them. Coming up, we'll tell you what good news is on the cards for Dominica's economy. Welcome back. Two top-of-the-line Bobcats are among an over $600,000 donation to the Office of Disaster Management from the U.S. Embassy. Andrea Louis has that story. On Thursday, U.S. Ambassador to Barbados and the OECS, Her Excellency Linda Tagliolatella, made the presentation of two Bobcats, two industrial water pumps, and two tower lights on behalf of the U.S. Southern Command, which is a branch of the United States Department of Defense. The ambassador says that while the U.S. provided help to Dominica in the wake of Tropical Storm Erica, the contingent on island had identified some areas of need. The embassy's military liaison office also identified the need for clearing roads and having water pumps. Today, I am pleased to offer Dominica two bobcats that will allow the Office of Management, Disaster Management to more quickly and effectively respond to future landslides. In addition, the new tower lights will permit operations to be conducted 24 hours a day, seven days a week, thereby opening roads to communities much more quickly than in the past. The water pumps are designed to rapidly reduce flooding to low-lying areas and will also re allow recovery operations to be conducted in, ex in an expediated manner. The donation was made under the Humanitarian Assistance Program of the U.S. Southern Command. Receiving the approximately $670,000 worth of equipment on behalf of the ODM was Minister for National Security, Honorable Raven Blackmore. And this will help us along the way in our whole effort to not only to respond, but the whole process of mitigation, which is so critical for us. Of course, taking into consideration the realities that we're confronted with, uh, persons say Dominica is nature island, wonderful scenery, nice topography, but there are certain realities that we have to live with. And the hurricanes, adverse weather conditions, and of course, the assistance they have given to us over the years are greatly, actually, is greatly appreciated. 
The U.S. Ambassador also revealed that the United States Southern Command is in the process of designing, funding and building two disaster relief houses in Dominica, one in Castle Bruce and one in Cotton Hill near Portsmouth. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. Dominica's economy is projected to grow by 3.2% this year and 2018. That's the good news Eastern Caribbean Central Bank Governor Timothy Antoine brought on his first official visit to the island this week. The projection at this stated that the Dominican economy will grow by 3.2% this year and again by 3.2% next year. And we believe, based on what we've seen so far, that it is quite possible that it can uh, meet um, those um, projections. Projections from the ECCB was for member states to grow their economies by 5% in 2015. However, this was not the case in Dominica due to Tropical Storm Erica. What's our target? We're targeting 5%. Last 2015, only two countries hit 5%. Grenada 5.2, St. Kitts 4.9. What happened in Dominica? Well, I think you know, in Dominica, Dominica actually contracted by 2.5%. But you know what? Before Erica, we were going to grow by, what, 2.8%. After Erica, the economy declined overall by 2.5%. That's the power of a natural disaster. Last year, 2016, our initial projection is that the economy grew by 1.7%. That number will probably change when we get additional data now that the year has ended. On the music scene, greater exposure for Dominica's artists on the international scene is on the agenda of the Association of Music Professionals for 2017. Chairman of AMP, McCarthy Marie, told the Channel 5 News three training courses hosted by his association in 2016 has helped poise Dominican musicians to reap more benefits from the music industry. And to do that, we have a plan that we're going to execute, which will involve one, making a compilation CD that will be very well packaged, um, which will be mostly given out to people in the business for promotional purposes. And then we will do some showcases of the artists in Martinique, Guadeloupe, and France. And in the meanwhile, of course, we've partnered with a television company that has outlets in, from South Africa all the way to Senegal, Ivory Coast, Cape Verde Islands, etc., and Martinique and Guadeloupe, to work with us to promote Dominica's artists. Marie pointed out that there are two factors which can affect the success of this mission. One, that the recordings must meet some technical consideration in terms of quality, as well as understanding how the business of music functions. This is why we put on the course on the business of music, so that people can know how you actually make money in it. Because making money in music depends entirely on an understanding of copyright, and what's called related rights. Um, and if you don't know that and you don't have anybody who works with you who is au fait with how the thing works, you will miss out on most of the money that you ought to make. In 2016, Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt made available $500,000 to develop the music industry in Dominica and Marie says this money, when approved for disbursement, has helped the musicians in Dominica. $100,000 of that sum has been spent so far. But the way we do it is we write up a project and we justify why we are doing it, mm -hmm. and we put a budget on it, and they send it to the Prime Minister's office for approval. Mm -hmm. After it's approved, then we execute it. Mm -hmm. So we don't have $500,000 mm -hmm. in our bank account on which we are spending. Mm -hmm. so, so this project I just told you about there, which is to say taking the artist to the market mm -hmm. and the steps that are necessary to do that, we have to write up a project mm -hmm and submit it to the Prime Minister's office for approval before we can actually officially announce that we are doing it. AMP is also working with the Cultural Division to source a foreign voice trainer to assist singers and potential singers on island. And to wrap things up with a carnival item, a new carnival princess will be crowned on February 12. The six contestants vying for carnival princess were launched on Wednesday. Here they are. Standing before you is nine years old Miss Odessa Dennis, a gem from the scenic fishing community of Forsasia. I am proud to say that I am representing the Bagate Primary School. I am nine year old Miss Janelle Philip, representing the Grand Fun Primary School. 
I am a 10-year-old Miss Maya Bell, proudly representing the Cyber Primary School and the Carnegie Territory by extension in this year's Carnival Princess Show. And I am contestant number three. Hailing from the prestigious community of River Siric, and proudly representing the Mon John Primary School is intelligent and energetic 10-year-old Miss Simone Moses. I am 10 years old Farizina Basir, a proud student of the Ad Kingston Primary School. From the historic town of Roseau, I am bold, beautiful, and intelligent 10-year-old Jewel George. And I will be representing the St. Martin Primary School at the 2017 Carnival Princess Show. That's news. Stay tuned for your sports highlights. First up, local cricket fans will get a chance to experience international cricket once more at Windsor Park when the West Indies and Pakistan play a test match carded for May 10, 2017. This as the West Indies and Pakistan cricket boards have agreed to play three tests, three one-day internationals and two T20 matches in the Caribbean from March 27 to May 15, 2017. Vice President of the West Indies Cricket Board and President of the Dominica Cricket Association, Emmanuel Nanton, says hosting the match here should have multiple benefits for the nation. Where we have a, a very passionate crowd, where the atmosphere and the ambience is uh, elating, and we want to take the opportunity again to, to demonstrate to the world the passion, the love, the joy uh, 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 that we have for cricket here in Dominica. We were given the first three one day international matches but we had no hotel rooms uh, available at that time. So they, they, they switched the agenda, uh, the itinerary, and gave Dominica the, the test match instead. We switched with Guyana. So we will be uh, providing heads on beds uh, out uh, at the hotels that will be used here. So I'm sure the tourism ministry will be very pleased for that. In terms of tourism, again, I mean, uh, the game will be looked at by millions and millions of people all around the world. And that too will give Dominica the exposure that it, that, uh, it requires, that it deserves, that it needs, as it continues to improve and build. Uh, with tourism. So really and truly uh, on the tourism part, the economic part will be tremendous. But uh, the whole idea of having international cricketers playing here in Dominica will serve as a boost, as a motivator for uh, the sportsmen, uh, particularly the cricketers, the young cricketers here in Dominica who are looking towards making cricket a career. The T20 matches are scheduled for Trinidad and Tobago, the three ODIs, Guyana, and the three tests, Jamaica, Barbados, and Dominica in that order. The last time a test match was hosted here was in June of 2015. Meantime, reports from ESPN Crick Info suggest the West Indies proposed tour to Pakistan for two D20s carded for mid-March is now off the table. According to the report, the WICB rejected the Pakistan Cricket Board's proposal for the tour after receiving information from the Federation of International Cricketers Association re-safety concerns in Pakistan. However, the two boards are considering the possibility of two T20s in Florida on March 19 and 20. The West Indies Players Association sought advice from FICA re the current security situation in Pakistan. FICA reported back to WICB citing the risk level in Pakistan remains at an extremely elevated state and that an acceptable level of participant security and safety cannot be guaranteed. Earlier this week, FICA warned that player safety and security could be compromised when travelling to Lahore for Pakistan's Super League final scheduled for March 5. Moving on to football, where police sports club hammered All Saints FC 4-0 in action from the DFA Division I League on Wednesday. Bath Estate and the Gully Dream Team had to settle for equal points when the scores at the end of that match were won all. And the game between RC Doctors and Exodus Football Club was called off due to weather conditions. Meantime, the league continues on Friday, where Newtown Juvenile Football Academy Harlem United will take on A.W. Sufir Spartans at Newtown Playing Field at 6 in the evening. And in the DFA Flow Premier League on Friday, Wacky Rollers will take on Northern Concrete and Steel Bombers from 6 p.m. at Dublin. Back with more cricket, we can tell you that India A won the tour match against England 11 by 6 wickets with 62 balls remaining on Thursday. England made 282 all out in 50 overs batting first. Johnny Bairstow got 64 of 65 balls 
while Alex Hales supported with 51. Set 283 to win, India A equaled the target with four wickets fallen in just 39.4 overs. The top scorers were A. Rahani, who supported with 91, with half centuries from Arpant, who scored 59 of 36 balls, and Sheldon Jackson, 59 of 56 balls. In the South Africa versus Sri Lanka test, South Africa posted 338 for three, batting first after 90 overs at the end of day one on Thursday. Jean Paul Domini scored 155, while Hashim Amla was undefeated on 125. Moving on to secondary school sports, we can tell you that Fortunes favored the St. Mary's Academy in the 13 and under category in the Sports Division Secondary Schools football competition on Wednesday. The SMA squad dominated play on the day to defeat Casabru Secondary 3-0. Michael Allen and Majid Peltier got one each for SMA with an own goal from a Casabru Secondary player. The games continue on Friday with two semi-final matches featuring a clash of the St. Mary's Academy and Portsmouth Secondary Schools and a must-see match between Isaiah Thomas Secondary and the Dominica Grammar School. The final is carded for Friday, January 20 at Windsor Park. Meantime, there were wins for the Portsmouth and Isaiah Thomas Secondary Schools in the Sports Division Netball Championships on Wednesday. Selena Langley was the star on the court, scoring an impressive 95% of the goals for PSS, netting 81 out of 91 attempts to help bring her team to 85 against Wesley High School's zero in the under-20 category. Isaiah Thomas Secondary escaped with a narrow victory against PSSB with game scores 14-13 in an under-16 encounter. More netball continues on Friday between PSSB and Goodwill Secondary in the under-16 category at 3 to be followed by Dominica State College against PSS in the under-20 at 4. Those games are carded for Portsmouth. And the Dominica Grammar School will play host to Casabru Secondary in the under-16 at 3 to be followed by Northeast Comprehensive versus St. Martin's Secondary also in the under-16 from 4 in the afternoon. And former West Indies cricket captain Jimmy Adams has taken over as director of cricket at the West Indies Cricket Board and not director of West Indies Cricket Board as previously reported. That's all the sporting highlights for now. Join us next time. Your weather forecast is next. Good evening and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I am your presenter, Annie Carreta Joseph. Weak and stable conditions continued to affect the region today as a result of a southwards dipping frontal boundary, resulting in partly cloudy to cloudy skies. Visible satellite imagery showed this band of low level clouds over the central Lesser Antilles today. Radar imagery indicated some scattered showers, mainly over the southern windwards during the afternoon. Conditions for tonight, partly cloudy skies with a few scattered showers. And tomorrow, partly cloudy to occasionally cloudy skies with some scattered showers. Sea conditions, rough in open water with waves expected to peak up to 12 feet. A small craft warning remains in effect up till Sunday. All users of the sea and persons in low-lying coastal areas, you are advised to be vigilant and to exercise caution. Taking a look at weather conditions into the weekend, partly cloudy to occasionally cloudy skies with some scattered showers. Some windy conditions can be expected on Saturday. Winds coming from the northeast at 40 km per hour, a further increase to 45 km per hour is expected on Sunday. Across the region tomorrow, partly cloudy to cloudy skies with some scattered showers can be expected throughout. On the international scene, clear skies in New York, partly cloudy skies in Miami, some snow showers in London, partly cloudy skies with some showers in Caracas, clear skies in Beijing, and some cold temperatures expected in New York, London, and in Beijing. The sun will rise tomorrow at 6.35 a.m. and set at 5.54 p.m. For up-to-date information, log on to our website at weather.gov.dm 
or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Thank you for viewing and join us next time. Good night. To end the news, the headlines again. An MOU in the pipeline for regional recognition of higher learning institutions. A response and preparedness plan to stave off Zika outbreak. And it's not all doom and gloom, says ECCB governor, about election of Donald Trump as U.S. president. Feel free to contact us at newsatmapping2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Kenny Williams. And to all our viewers around the world, thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow.